I was born as a refugee, not even, as a refugee from Rwanda. My childhood, I was grown in different families. Because I was a refugee with my mother in the refugee camp in Nyachivare. Our mother left us in the refugee camp when I was two. A certain family adopted me at two. I lived with that lady. I called my mother. Then after a certain period of time when I was like seven, that lady died. Then I was adopted by another family. I stayed with them until I was 13. I joined a soccer academy. I was a college student who, took, who was taking computer science in Kawari. Then after the, the genocide, in 1994 genocide, the RPF came and invaded Uganda, Rwanda and took over power in 1995. The million people that died, most, the, the biggest percent was the Hutu, who resisted not to kill the other fellow Tutsis. They were Hutu that didn't want the genocide to happen. Because I was a Rwandese, I knew that one day I will go back home. Because Hutu never shown me bad characters when I went back to Rwanda after the genocide. They are the people who were telling me, your grandfather, although your family were killed, everything was taken. But we, uh, you say, they are saying it's the government of national unity, they, they even gave me land. But because me, my, my, my life was not to live in the village, but to know where my origin was. I was a, a soccer boy, playing for a good club in Rwanda. I was a teacher, teaching computer science. I, I was renting in their apartment, a tenant like this apartment, I, I stay at their building. And they, then she could come visit me and see how I live. My wife, we never stayed long because we were of different ethnicity. But after a period of time, she died. I was working as an assistant production manager. So production, the production of the paper was on my head. You are sinking enabling president for helping you to liberate the country. And yet you are giving me a story that the liberation of Rwanda belongs to Rwandese. So I was in for it. Because by the time they, they came at my house, they took all the computers that I had at my house. They found I have all the templates for the independent media group, which opposes the government. So I knew that if I could stay, uh, I'm not bigger than other people who have been shot dead, uh, uh, journalists who have been shot dead. I'm nothing. Amnesty International intervened when I was locked. I was removed from the prison after three days. That's when I, the, next, the, 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 sad, the first day I had to live with Amnesty International from Rwanda to Congo. I fired Rwanda and went back Kampala as a refugee for the second time. I came to America 2016. I came through Chicago, Philadelphia, then I settled in New Haven. The biggest challenge is here is when you come here, our education is turned into zero. 
The first job I did was housekeeping. Very challenging job. You are from a computer every day, you do films, you do graphics, you, 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 you take pictures, Photoshop for cleaning and uh, give, giving uh, color separation, and now you are cleaning toilet. I was working uh, in the fiber factory as an assistant technical. It was last, uh, when I felt sick, it was, uh, I had a heartburn. It started like a heartburn. I used to tell my friend, oh, I have a lot of heartburn, heartburn, heartburn. I decided to go to hospital. I asked for an appointment. Because of coronavirus, they never accepted my appointment. I remember I was going to work. I was like, no. I had to sleep on the bed. I called 911. Then the police had to come in. I told the police, you know, I've been sick for the, all, for the last four months having heart burn and I'm feeling fire everywhere in my stomach. The police had to take me. Do you think I, I never came back when the police took me? I, it's three months there. I'm on chemo and uh, immunosilapy. Both chemo and immuno now, they mix it. Maybe that's why even the hair is coming back. May I had red, if you could see my pictures of one year back and now. One year back and now, you could not accept that it's me. Don't see me here now, I'm growing old because of cancer. Cancer has made me grow older. <laughs> Iris is doing it. Iris received me. Yeah, they did a great job by doing shelter, but mostly by getting a good culture companion friend. But it's Albert who was working as if he's, uh, he's from the uh, integrated refugee. But he's just a volunteer. So if I didn't have this volunteer, life would, would have been a difficult, very difficult really, because you are not working. If the cancer goes, I hope to, to, to go back to work or I could do my own work. I have a dream of, do, of doing my own studio so that I could also be designing like magazines. If I wish, if I could get that one, because I know if I could get that one, I could make it because I could design. You could design a concept that could give you enough money. But when you are sick, you can't do anything. Now I was supposed to do to start off studio class, but you can't do studio when you have cancer. Cancer, some, sometimes the mind is off because of chemo. You can't go to school. The only, the, uh, good, the advice I give to the refugees that comes to America, they should not be reluctant when they come to the U.S. When you come to the U.S., even if you are a university graduate with two degrees like Morenzi, when you reach here, you go to school. My, my concern is about the refugees in the camps. Me I, I, and how they purchase their food and how they are giving them their supplies. I, I went there and I, I went to check on the refugees all the time to see how they live in the, in the refugee camp. But you found life is, most you found kids are dying every day. They bury every day. Women are being buried every day in the refugee camp. 